Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Magic Ben Mag 1 mini laptop with an 8.9 inch touchscreen display, an Intel Core M3 Amber Lake Y processor, and one of the best little keyboards on one of these mini laptops that I've tested in a while. So you can check out my full review for more information about the, the Mag 1. Uh, as I mentioned, it's got a backlit keyboard with sort of a pretty good layout for touch typing. It's got a touchpad below the keyboard, which is something that you don't necessarily get on a lot of these small form factor laptops that we've seen with seven to nine inch displays recently. Um, but it ships with Windows 10, and I know that's not what everybody wants to be running. So I'm gonna take the opportunity of this video to show you some alternate operating systems. So I just went ahead and plugged in a USB flash drive with Fedora 30 on it. And we're gonna go ahead and restart and boot into the uh, live USB of Fedora. So I'm just gonna hit the escape key during the startup here. Probably don't need to hit it that many times, but I'm always worried I'll miss it. Uh, from this menu, I'm using the arrow keys and I'm just gonna go over to the boot override section in the save and exit menu. Uh, I don't know how well you can see this in this light. There we go. Um, and from here, there's an option to choose the bootable flash drive. So I'm just gonna boot from that and say that I want to start Fedora from the workstation here. So it'll take a moment to load here and I'll just uh, point out a couple of features of this little laptop. We've got a micro HDMI port, a headset jack. There's a SIM card slot, even though this version doesn't actually have a 4G LTE modem, some versions do. We've got this full-sized USB port here, as well as USB Type-C port, which is used for charging and or data, and a micro SD card reader. The uh, keyboard is not exactly a full-size keyboard. The keys are pretty much full-size, but the spacing might be a little bit smaller than you're used to. And there's a couple of weird concessions here, like the uh, F1 through 10 keys are right up here, but F11 and F12 are above. The tab key is above the two and so forth. Uh, so here we are, we're booted into a live instance of Fedora. And I'm going to say that I want to try Fedora. For some reason, it's not letting me click. So I'll just use the touch screen. And let's uh, connect to Wi Fi. Type in my password here. So it's interesting to note here that I can move the cursor, but it looks like tapping isn't necessarily, there we go, clicking works, but tapping doesn't work. So if I press down on the touchpad, it works just fine. Uh, tapping doesn't necessarily register anything. This is just the out of the box experience that we're looking at here. So I can't necessarily talk about long-term performance and things like battery life or sleep or anything like that. But uh, in the past, when I've tried this, I was reasonably impressed at how well things seem to work out of the box. So for instance here, uh, we can do brightness controls, we can do uh, volume adjustments. The touch screen does seem to work just fine. We can do pinch to zoom. It's a little bit, it's not quite as smooth as I would like it to be, but it does seem to work. And uh, generally speaking, everything seems to work just fine. So let's go to uh, YouTube. It would probably help if I typed that properly. So audio seems to work, video playback seems to work. Hi, this is Brian Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Magic Bin. 
And we've got a little inception there. So uh, audio, video, Wi-Fi, uh, pretty much everything seems to be working out of the box. And something that I'm really uh, pleasantly surprised at here is that, among other things, what's working is the screen resolution at an orientation. On a lot of little laptops, they seem to have tablet or uh, basically tablet displays. And so sometimes what will happen is everything will be twisted sideways and the resolution might not be perfect when you try loading up a, a Linux-based uh, operating system. In this case, everything seems just fine. And what options do we have if we wanted to adjust the DPI? Let's see. So we could rotate the screen if we wanted to, and we could change the scaling. So right now it's at 200%. We could change it to 100% or 300% if you wanted everything to look a little bit smaller or a little bit larger. And so that's sort of what the, the difference looks like. So. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with Fedora here. So let's go ahead and power this down and try Ubuntu. All right, same thing. I'm going to press and hold the power button. You do have to sort of press and hold it for a little while before the blue light comes on here to let you know that it's powering up. But once that's done, I'm going to hit the escape key and do the same thing. Come on over to save and exit. Look for the flash drive and choose to boot from there. Try Ubuntu without installing. Uh, this is Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, so it's not the newest version, but it's uh, one of the later uh, one of the latest versions of the stable edition of Ubuntu. Um, again, because I'm not installing this into the operating system, I can't talk about battery life. I also can't necessarily talk about the fingerprint sensor and some of the other features. Uh, if you wanted to try Ubuntu or Fedora or other operating systems before installing them on a hard drive, this is basically what you would often do, is just boot them from a flash drive and see that most things are working out of the box or not. Um, if things don't work out of the box, that's not necessarily a death sentence. It sometimes just means that you might need to search for uh, tweaks, but it's nice to know that you don't necessarily need to do anything special in order to get things working properly. And that does seem to be the case with uh, both Ubuntu and Fedora. Here tapping seems to work as well as clicking, so that's nice. It uh, makes it possible to do things like right-click by using two fingers. All right, so we should be online, connected to Wi-Fi again. Uh, let's check on the screen brightness and volume. I'm hearing audio, so that's always a good sign. YouTube up again. Let's try a different video this time. No problem with audio or video playback. And as I said, multi finger right clicking seems to work just fine. Keyboard shortcuts are working. Uh, let's make sure you can. Yeah, so clicking works as well as tapping. And the touch screen seems to work. So overall, the experience out of the box is pretty good here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the display settings and see if we have any options here. Overall, the screen looks pretty comfortable to me. But again, it looks like we can switch to 100% if you wanted to um, make everything look really, really tiny. Uh, just to show you what that looks like in practical terms. So that is Lilliputing.com and how much data fits on the home screen at 100% scaling versus 200% scaling where everything looks a little bit more comfortable and easy to see.
Now with Windows, I found that you can adjust things a little bit more. Uh, you can fine tune it more, so you can do. Um, Let's do a little two-finger scrolling here. Uh, you can fine-tune it, so you can do 175% if you like that, or 150%. Uh, that does not seem to be an option out of the box here. There might be settings that you can adjust that would allow you to do things like that, but out of the box you get 100%, 200%, or 300%, or you could change the screen resolution. Actually, no, you can't. It just gives you the one option here. And if you wanted to, you could rotate the screen, but there's not a lot of reason to do that if you're using this in laptop mode. Um, because it just makes it a little bit trickier to use and it's not a tablet. It doesn't have a convertible tablet style design. So the only reason that I could see you wanting to do something like this is maybe if you were going to stand it up and plug it into an external monitor. But overall, um, I think that the screen rotation being set to landscape mode out of the box is what we want with this style of device and it's something that you don't often get with this style of device when you're using Linux. It's something that some, uh, in the past you've had to maybe look for some custom versions of operating systems or make some tweaks yourself. So overall, pretty impressed with the Linux uh, out-of-the-box experience on Fedora and Ubuntu. Uh, there are, of course, I don't want to say infinite, but a whole lot of different operating systems that you could try. But it's nice to see that out-of-the-box um, alternatives to Windows 10 do seem to work reasonably well on the Mag 1. So that is uh, Ubuntu and Fedora on the Mag 1. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.com and you can find more details at the website about this little laptop and uh, also in the description to this video.